Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Revit Dominator 3 Gore-Tex jacket and trousers. This new jacket and jeans combination from Revit is a serious piece of kit for riders who are really serious about their riding. It's made from premium materials throughout with a three layer Gore-Tex Pro laminated outer shell for the tip top waterproofing performance and it has a very high specification throughout. So let's run through what this thing is made of. That outer material, like I said, it's a 400 adenia nylon material with three layers of Gore-Tex Pro laminated to the inner surface. That means the Gore-Tex membrane joins in the fight against rain much earlier than if you have it attached loosely inside the jacket or if that membrane is a removable separate liner. So this is more like having your waterproof material on the outside as your first line of defense rather than having it on the inside of the jacket to protect you against rain once it's soaked through the outer. That means the jacket stays drier in the first place and it also dries out completely much quicker than it would on a normal waterproof textile jacket. I've worn enough Gore-Tex Pro suits over the years to know that this material is the most serious protection you can get against rain. There are downsides to it. It's a bit stiffer than a jacket with either a loose membrane inside or a removable membrane, and it'll run warmer in summer than one that has a removable membrane because you're not able to take the membrane out of this. But if you know you're gonna be facing rain and a lot of it, then there really is nothing better than Gore-Tex Pro. There's another big benefit too, and that's direct venting. If you open the zips up, then air can get straight through to your body on the inside without it hitting a waterproof membrane first. On top of that Gore-Tex outer, there's extra crash resistance at the shoulders and down each arm with armor core material, which combines Cordura with an aramid fiber for even more slide protection. And then this embossed surface over the top provides even more abrasion resistance on top of just having that armor core surface. The use of all that armor core does mean this jacket runs pretty stiff, so thankfully there are some stretch zones above the elbows and also running under the arms and up behind the shoulders to give some extra flexibility. There's loads of light reflective material to help you stay visible at night, and then there are four different types of fit adjustment on this jacket. There are two belt adjusters on the ribs on each side, and the higher of those two can also slide up or down, so you can decide where you want it adjusting to suit your own body shape. There are zipped pleats either side of the hips to create some extra room when you're sat on the bike. And then there are belted arm adjusters below the elbows. So let's look at the venting. There are eight air inlets on the front of this jacket. You get zipped vents at the upper and the lower arm. And then on the rib cage and these larger vents as well up around the collarbone area. These have zips and Velcro to loosen the covers, which then clip back out of the way with this magnetic fidlock clip there. And then this dam section here means that any rain that does happen to creep past the zip or the Velcro when the vent is shut, can't get past that dam section and they get through to the vent and get through on the inside. So that gives you the protection you need against rain there. So we've got that vent, this vent here, and then the two arm vents are here and here. And this one's really effective because you find that when you're riding with your arms parallel to the road, you get a plentiful amount of air flowing through into your forearms just through that vent there. And as well as all of those vents across the front, you've also got two zipped vents on the back and those two are both on either side of the spine. All of those vents front and back are direct and they open up the waterproof membrane so you can get a more complete flow of air through to the inside. The main fastener for this jacket is just a big chunky zip and then there's a Velcro storm flap over the top to stop rain getting to the teeth of the zip. At the collar, there's a press stud that attaches to this adjusting plate and it can also be popped back to give you some more room and a bit of extra airflow if you prefer. There's also a zip off waterproof storm collar that you can fasten across the throat after you've done up your helmet strap if it's really cold or wet outside. I don't normally bother with those sorts of things, but this one's actually quite flexible, so I gave it a go and it was actually quite useful at blocking out chills when I was riding in some really cold weather. The cuffs of these jacket, they're really quite simple, nice wide openings with this Velcro strap to tighten them over your gloves and get a good seal. I could fit a really chunky pair of winter gloves in there with no trouble at all. In fact, I managed to get heated gloves in there even with batteries in the cuff. That's probably the widest test I can imagine for this cuff, so there really is loads of room there to get those over a glove. There's also a liner in there, this piece here, with thumb loops to give you another layer under your gloves if you like that sort of thing and there's also a zip attaching it into the jacket. So it means you can take it out if you don't like that sort of thing. 
So the last thing to deal with on the outside of this jacket, the pockets. There are two at the waist here, which do up with poppers. And then there's a diagonal section just here that's fleece lined, so you've got somewhere to tuck your hands when you're not on the bike. Both of those pockets are waterproof, and the same for the stash pocket that sits at the lower back, like you find on most adventure jackets. There's an extra pocket for cards as well, or toll tickets, which sits at the base of the left sleeve just here. So moving to the inside of this jacket, I might as well start with the internal pockets. There are four of them. There's a Napoleon pocket behind the main zip, and then there are two at the waist, and a secret pocket, as Revit call it, which is on the inside of the removable kidney belt. Kidney belts like this jacket has are really popular in Germany in particular, where riders like the support around the base of their spine. That kidney belt feeds through the lining of the jacket, and if you don't like it, you just take it out, and then you can fasten up the two zips where it feeds through. There's no warmth liner included with this jacket, so if you need something like that for a cold days, you'll need to budget for a mid layer to go underneath. There's a full set of armour included with this jacket, shoulders, elbows and the back. The shoulders and elbows are covered by Revit's C-Flex material. That meets the higher level 2 of the CE standard and it also passes the two optional tests that show it's very effective in high and low temperatures as well as the ambient temperature. The back protector is made from Revit's C-Soft material and it also meets the higher level 2 of the CE standard. There's the option to fit chest protection too, open the internal pockets on the inside of the jacket and there's a way of revealing the pockets where the chest armour can sit. Overall, the Dominator 3 Gore-Tex jacket meets the middle level of the CE protection standard for clothing, which is AA. Finally, on the inside, there are two connection zips to attach the jacket to Revit trousers. I wore this jacket with the matching Dominator 3 Gore-Tex trousers, which are made from the same materials in exactly the same way and they work really well together, probably as you'd expect. The trousers have a salopette section at the midriff that creates an overlap with the jacket, so there's no need to actually connect them with the zips if you don't want to. The salopette section does come off if wearing the trousers like that doesn't suit you, and then you just connect the two with the zips. Those trousers are available in three leg lengths, and I found the sizing on them to be pretty accurate, as I did for the jacket, actually. I'd say if you sit on the cusp of two sizes, so for example, sometimes you're a medium and sometimes you're a large, then I personally would go for the bigger size as my starting point. The trousers that go with this are £739.99 as we record this video, and this jacket is £1,149.99, so that means you're just shy of 1900 quid for the combination. I'm sure there will be people who say that for that money you could get something from Rucker or Climb, which are probably the two marquee brands in this type of motorcycling, but I've worn plenty of kit from those brands too, and I think this Revit suit is on a par with those for specification and for quality. I said at the beginning of this video that this is serious kit, and I guess the price tag shows that you have to be serious to go for something like this. The Dominator 3 is tough, has the best level of waterproofing you can get, and is built to a brilliant specification. I would expect this to last the test of time, and if you can run to this sort of money for your bike kit, then I really don't think you'll be disappointed with it. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Revit Dominator 3 Gore-Tex jacket and trousers. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.